Here's your May real estate update. April is behind us and I wanted to give you a high level overview of what I'm seeing in the real estate market here in the Seattle Bellevue region. So if you're a data nerd and you want statistics and numbers, please reach out to me. I'll be happy to share all that. But instead, I wanted to give you a pretty high level um, and not kind of get into the weeds. So first of all, April was another really, really busy month. The first half of the month was a little slower. We had spring break um, and then Easter. So a lot of families were, we've noticed, were either traveling and a lot of sellers were holding off to put their home on the market until we got through those two weeks. So then we saw a big jump in inventory the week after Easter. Another thing we're seeing is that the interest rates having gone up did have a pretty drastic impact on all the buyers and rightfully so i mean we were in the low threes and we went to high fives in a matter of like six to eight weeks and that significantly affects the buying power of those out there looking for homes today so with more inventory and higher rates both of them combined the things are feeling quite a bit different today than they were a few weeks ago so the first thing is, I don't know if you're paying attention to Redfin or Zillow, you're probably starting to see a lot of price drops that we haven't seen in feels like years, right? And because out of the gate, folks were a little too ambitious on the price they were asking, they did not get it, they sat a little bit longer, and now they have to work their way down to actually sell their home. Another thing you might have noticed is we're seeing quite a bit of price increases, and you might wonder why that's happening. So. The strategy has been for the longest time to price your home low, generate a lot of buzz, a lot of interest, hopefully get multiple offers that would escalate the price up. And so what's happening now is that if they took that approach and they sat through the weekend, but they did not get multiple offers to drive the price up, the sellers are realizing that, well, I'm not willing to sell my home for the price I started at. So therefore they increase it to the number that they would ultimately be comfortable accepting and then they also are now kind of forced to give it more time to eventually attract an offer. So there's still a shortage of inventory, there's still lots of folks, and the frenzy has definitely died down. So maybe now we're not getting 10 to 15 offers on a home, but we're getting two to three or four, but are very, very strong. So the ultimate end result still, as of today, appears to be very similar. But as a seller, I would highly encourage you now to really make sure you do your work up front to make sure your home stands out because when there's a bit more inventory, the days of just throwing up a home in any condition and however it shows and selling for record breaking price are gone. And a perfect example in April, we, I had a listing in Bothell, the sellers in that case get all the credit, but the home was stunning, it showed beautifully and that same weekend three other comparable homes came on in a similar square footage, similar territory, similar price. We ended up selling just two days after with an early offer that was very compelling and we got all the terms we wanted. The other three homes sat through the weekend and did not get any offers, right? One of them dropped the price because they started higher. Another one, as I talked about, had to increase the price because they did not get multiple offers. So it's still a great time to sell. If you take the right approach, you'll still do well, but please make sure you don't cheap out. Get the landscaping done, get the place painted, what, get it staged, whatever it is, listen to your broker and make sure it stands out from the competition. Also, when pricing your home, you really wanna think about, we briefly talked about that, maybe it's not the wisest thing to still price it low and expect multiple offers because you may not get it. So now the conversation I'm having with sellers is saying, hey, well, what is that number that you would be that's reasonable that you would be excited about. And perhaps maybe we want to start a little bit below that to generate some buzz, or we might as well start at the number, not even set a review date, and just ask for a reasonable amount that you would be happy with. And that's, it's a, it's a different approach because that's not something any of us have done for the last few years or so. And a lot of folks are asking me, what's my opinion? Are are we heading towards a recession? Are things gonna really cool off? Have we hit the ceiling? And the, the truth is, I don't know, right? None of us have a crystal ball, but we can all predict. I think in the short term, things are definitely, again, if things are feeling different, but we've been in such a frenzy, and I think everyone got sticker shock with how quickly the rates have gone up. So now everyone is just kind of pumping the brakes a little bit. 
but I do think things are gonna normalize and level off because now even though our 30 year fixed mortgage is in, a, in the high fives, that's still a good rate historically, right? I think we've just been spoiled with rates in the threes, but with an inflation on the horizon, if you can still purchase a home that you're gonna live in and enjoy and get that loan in the fives, over the 30 years, that's still gonna be a very smart buy, right? And so things are slightly cooling off, but I do think they're gonna normalize. And if you project this out further, it, I think real estate is all about supply and demand, right? We still have a shortage of housing. They're not building enough homes. There's not enough homes to satisfy the demand on the national level. So it's reasonable to expect that things are gonna continue to appreciate but it probably won't be a 20% appreciation year over year, right? But, but a more normal, more gradual approach. So if you're buying a home and if you really care, if you're thinking to sell it in a year or two, maybe this is not the time to go all in. But if you're looking for a home that you plan on living for the next three to five to seven to 10 years, uh, I think as long as you're able to get into a home that fits your needs well, that you're in the neighborhood that you want, and if it goes down next, if the value of it dips by 100 grand next year, who cares? Unless you're selling, right? If you're not selling, it'll come right back up and it'll continue to do what it's always done is appreciate. So if you have any questions, I know this was a very high level. So again, if you want anything more specific, give me a call anytime. I'd be happy to share that with you and I'll catch you next month.